which is a statement by Shona Robinson. Yeah. Oh yes. Okay. A statement by Shona Robinson on the decisions on major service change proposals in Glasgow and Clyde. Uh, the Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of her statement, and so there should be no interventions or interruptions. I would encourage all members who wish to ask a question of the Cabinet Secretary to press their request to speak buttons now. Okay. And I call on Shona Robinson. Presiding officer, I welcome the opportunity to inform members of the decisions I announced on Friday the 19th of January on service change proposals submitted to me by the Chairman of NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde. On the 14th of March 2017, NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde submitted major service change proposals for Clyde inpatient and day case paediatric services. This was followed on the 16th of August by the board submitting major service change proposals for rehabilitation services in the northeast of Glasgow, including Lightburn Hospital. Presiding officer, before I turn to the detail of each proposal, I want to explain my decision-making process. Given the significance of the proposals, I took appropriate time to consider them. I asked for and received advice, including expert clinical views. I also visited the paediatric ward at the Royal Alexandra Hospital, the new Royal Hospital for Children on the Queen Elizabeth campus, and visited Lightburn Hospital. Alongside these visits, I met with local stakeholders, including campaigners seeking the retention of paediatric services in Ward 15, as well as uh, patients and carers. And considering the proposals for Lightburn Hospital, I met with the local Parkinson's uh, group. I also received reports from the Scottish Health Council confirming that the NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde had, compiled, uh, had complied with and met established guidance on involving, engaging and consulting with local people, providing them with the opportunity to make their views known. I'll now address my decision in relation to the Lightburn Hospital service change proposals. I want to make clear that I've carefully considered all of the available information and all of the representations made to me. In doing so, I had to consider whether the board had made a compelling case in the best interests of patients and whether the board had credible and viable plans for the provision of high quality local services. I've been consistently clear during the board's review process that the final proposals had to effectively address, address the concerns which resulted in our rejection of the previous Lightburn closure proposals in 2011. Concerns were raised by local people that these concerns had not been addressed in the current proposals. In considering the proposals, my paramount concern was that if they were to be implemented, they would result in the removal of a significant and highly valued healthcare facility in one of the most deprived communities in Scotland. I wish to record that I accept the local clinicians' views and have given very careful consideration to them and their support for the closure of Lightburn Hospital. However, I had to balance these views against concerns that I, I have that the proposed replacement of local community and support services are not yet sufficiently developed to support the closure. Presiding officer, I want to make clear that this was not an easy decision. I fully agree that healthcare services cannot be static and that the ref reform will sometimes be necessary. In my letter to the board setting out my decision, I've acknowledged and welcomed their commitment to work with other planning partners to develop as a priority a health and social care hub in East Glasgow. I've reiterated to the board that engagement with and involvement of the local community is of paramount importance in any future planning. This is of course applicable to all NHS boards when considering any service redesign and I'll take the opportunity to reinforce this at my next meeting with NHS chairs. I'll now turn to my decision to approve the board's proposals to transfer inpatient and day case paediatric services from Ward 15 at the Royal Alexandra Hospital in Paisley to the Royal Hospital for Children in Glasgow. Presiding officer, I gave long and hard consideration to this proposal and it has been one of the most difficult that I've been required to make in my time as health secretary. As in my consideration of the Lightburn proposal, I have carefully considered all of the information available to me and all of the representations made to me, including the board's submissions, advice and evidence provided by officials and expert clinical advice. My judgment had to be on whether the board had made a compelling case in the best interest of patient care, whether it had credible and viable plans for the provision of high quality local services and whether the proposals were consistent with national guidance. Having taken time to come to a decision, I have approved the board's proposals. 
In coming to this decision, I recognised it was only the inpatient and day case services that would transfer and that the majority of patient cases would continue to be seen and treated locally. I would stress that the accident and emergency departments at both the RAH and Inverclyde Royal Hospitals will continue to receive paediatric patients who self-present alongside the continuation of outpatient clinics as well as specialist community paediatric services. The board has made a compelling case for these proposals which have attracted overwhelming clinical support. Only today I received a letter from the lead paediatric clinicians and the chief nurse for paediatrics and neonatology at the RAH and the Royal Hospital for Children, reiterating their clinical support for the proposals. They have told me that the change will help implement the standards set out by the Royal College of Paediatrics and Ch Child Health to ensure high quality healthcare is delivered to children and young people, and that the implementation of these standards will contribute to better outcomes for children and young people. They also highlight the benefit to patient care of having access to dedicated on-site subspecialty medical teams like cardiology, neurology, nephrology and respiratory medicine to name but a few. This is further supported by the submission of Action for Sick Children Scotland, now Children's Health Scotland, to the board's consultation. Their submission concluded that the most compelling argument is that clinical standards are there to support the best quality health care for all of the children of Scotland and we feel that this would be best achieved by moving Ward 15 to the Royal Hospital for Children. The local clinicians also offer the reassurance on emergency care that they do not, nor do they see, any risk to future patients affected by the change in an emergency pathway that directs general practitioners and the Scottish Ambulance Service to the Royal Hospital for Children instead of either the RAH or the Royal Hospital for Children. The change is clear for all concerned. Now, I recognise that from the representations received and the meetings that I have attended that many local people from the Paisley area in, area in particular will be deeply disappointed by this decision. I do recognise that the services families have received from Ward 15 have been highly valued and that there are understandable concerns about access to the specialised services to be transferred to the Royal uh, Hospital for Children and how these will be integrated into those outpatient and community services that will continue to be provided locally. There are also issues about transport and financial support and family support and information services. And that's why I have approved these proposals on two conditions. One, that the Health Board must maintain and continue to improve community-based paediatric services and maintain local provision. And two, that the Board must work directly with families from the Paisley area on specific individual treatment service access plans to be complete before any service changes are made, ensuring that there is a full understanding of what services and support will be available to them and from where. The letter from the Glasgow clinicians also gives an assurance that the open access families currently attending Ward 15 will be fully involved in planning how the changes will affect their child. Any specific concerns they have will be addressed on an individual basis. Presiding officer, I've spoken to the board chair and reiterated the conditions set out in my letter of approval, and I've received a letter from him giving me this assurance. I hope that local families, members of the campaign group and members here today will understand that I've made this decision in good faith, as informed by all the available evidence and representations. With the underpinning conditions that I've put in place, I believe that this decision is in the best interests of children across the Clyde area. Thank you. We turn now to questions. Miles Briggs to be followed by Anna Sauer. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and I thank the Cabinet Secretary for advanced statement, uh, advanced copy of her <coughs> statement. On the 1st of May 2016, Nicola Sturgeon promised the public in relation to Ward 15 at the RAH, and I quote, there's no proposals to close that particular ward. I believe in local services with access for local people. And here we are today, two years on. Yet at that time, NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde had initially begun looking into moving inpatient paediatric services from RAH in 2011, when, the first, when the Nicola Sturgeon was Health Secretary. The closure of the ward to inpatients had been on the board's preferred option since 2012, when she was also Health Secretary, and the board stepped up efforts to centralise services after the opening of Glasgow's new Royal Hospital for Children in 2015, when she was the First Minister. Did the First Minister forget all of this when she promised at a public event in 2016 that she was not, or was she attending 
to attempt to mislead the public before an election. Presiding officer, I believe that today will go down as Nicola Sturgeon and the Health Secretary's Nick Clegg moment in this Parliament. And now we see this Health Secretary and the backbenchers from the SNP hanging their heads in shame yeah. of this decision. Yeah. To justify this de decision to Parliament, breaking a key election pledge made to families across the west of yeah. Scotland. And, presiding officer, doesn't this closure, doesn't this ward closure, coming on top of the SNP's failure over children's hospital services and the long-going incidents we've seen, as long as closure of the kids' inpatient ward here in St. Jo St. John's in Livingston, just go to demonstrate that the public cannot trust a word this First Minister or SNP government says when it comes to our local health services. Yay. Well Cabinet Secretary. Well, uh, first of all, can I address the issue uh, that Miles Briggs first raised um, about uh, the First Minister's comments on the 1st of May uh, 2016. So let me say two things very clearly about that. First of all, uh, the board, the Greater Glasgow and uh, Clyde Health Board approved their proposals on the 18th of October 2016, well after the comments on the 1st of May. But more importantly, more importantly than that, the Scottish Government received this submission on the 14th of March 2017 almost a year later, plus that was the first time that I, and it was that it's I that have made this decision, the first time that I saw the clinical advice that I have based my decision on. And it is that clinical advice that is absolutely critical here. I have based my decision on the clear clinical view, including from those very clinicians who work with these kids on Ward 15. That this decision, as I said in my statement, is about delivering better outcomes for children and young people. So when Miles Briggs or anyone else says that I'm wrong in my decision, they must also be saying that these clinicians are wrong in their decision. Now, I'm not sure on what basis Miles Briggs is able to say that, what experience or evidence he will put forward to say those local clinicians are wrong. I, as a politician, cannot say those local clinicians are wrong. That is why I have accepted their evidence, and that is why I have accepted this decision, albeit how difficult it was. And just to reiterate, for all of those families, plans will be put in place absolutely before this goes ahead, and I hope that that is of some reassurance to the families concerned. And I saw a word to be followed by Ivan McKee. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of her statement and I pay tribute to the Save Lightburn campaign and the Kids Need Our Ward campaign, local residents and service users tirelessly fighting to protect their local services, services they were promised would stay open during the election. Sadly, while one is celebrating for now, the other is rightly distraught and dismayed. But the reality is we should never have been here in the first place. When faced with a leaked cuts paper, the government denied any proposals to close Lightburn yep. or the REH paediatric ward even existed. Yep. Neil Bibby was called a liar. Paul Martin was called a liar. Kezia Dugdale was called a liar. The campaigners were accused of scaremongering. But now the closure is confirmed and 8,000 patient cases will be transferred to the already overstretched QEUH. This is a result of cuts imposed by this government and a workforce crisis overseen by this Cabinet Secretary. But not a single MSP on those benches has the backbone to call out for what it is. Where were the local MSPs? Yeah. George Adam, yeah. Tom yeah. Arthur and Derek Mackay? Nowhere. Where was the local MP, Mary Black? Nowhere. And when confronted by a local resident live on national television, Nicola Sturgeon said, and I quote, there are no plans to close this ward. I pledge to keep hospital services local. This is a betrayal of local people. How can we ever trust a word this cabinet secretary or this government ever says again? Cabinet secretary. Well, as I said to Miles Briggs, uh, the, the submission from the board came to me on the 14th of March 2017. That was the first time that I saw the clinical advice on which I have based my decision. 
Now, if Anna Sawar is saying that is the wrong decision, then he also must be saying that the local clinicians who have treated these children for many years are also wrong in their clinical judgment, because that, as a politician, is what I have based my decision on. Now, if Anna Sarwar thinks he knows better than those local clinicians, he better say on what evidence he has that can uh, make that stack up. Now, Anna Sarwar mentioned the cuts paper. Now, let me say two things about that. One is that the uh, issue of uh, finance is quite important here because in relation to the Ward 15 at the RAH, it is estimated that there is about £840,000 that will be reinvested in local services, paediatric services at the Royal Alexandra Hospital and at the Royal Hospital for Children. Every penny of that will be reinvested in paediatric services at both of those hospitals. Had I been wanting to save money, Anna Sarwar, it would have been the Lightburn proposal that I would have given the go-ahead because it would have saved £4 million. This is about nothing about money. This is about the clinician's view of what is better outcomes for children and young people. As a politician, I can't ignore clinicians who tell me that for children and young people there would be better outcomes by this decision. And I would challenge any politician in this place to ignore that clinical advice. Ivan McKee to be followed by Morris Golden. Ivan McKee. Uh, thank you. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree with me that the decisions announced on Greater Glasgow and Clyde Health Board major service change proposals show that the review process is robust and evidence-based and that where there are good reasons in line with the Scottish Government's national clinical strategy and other policies to overturn health board proposals, such as in the case of Lightburn Hospital, the process reaches the correct decisions? Cabinet Secretary. Yes, um, what I can say is that with the, the Lightburn proposals, uh, they were not developed to a stage that, had, uh, that was viable or credible. There is the idea of the East End Hub, which in, in essence is a, is a good idea, uh, but it has to be developed. And what we would want to see is, in terms of the sites for that hub going forward, for the Lightburn site uh, to be considered as part of that. So there is far more work for Glasgow to be done around developing that hub, which, as I think we would all agree, has some merit, but it, there are, it was at such an early stage that I couldn't possibly have approved it in the form that it came into me. Morris Golden to be followed by Neil Bibby. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Can the Cabinet Secretary confirm when she expects the agreement process to conclude for families currently receiving treatment at Ward 15 at the RAH, and what will happen if agreements cannot be reached? Cabinet Secretary. Well, um, I have made it very clear to the Board, uh, to John Brown as the Chair, that the, for those families who have complex health needs, and there's around 200 of those families uh, many of whom are on the open access um, agreement, that those plans have to be in place before these changes go ahead. Now, the board and John Brown, as the chair, has written back to me agreeing that, uh, and the clinicians in their letter also say that is important. Uh, and uh, what needs to be very clear in all of those plans is uh, access to the, to the new hospital, how that will happen, but also about the local services that will still be provided uh, to those families. Uh, so that is one of the conditions, I made it very clear, one of the conditions on approval of this, that all of those plans needed to be in place. And that's something that I will certainly hold the board to. Neil Bibby, to be followed by Alison Johnson. Over 17,000 people supported the campaign to stop the closure of the kids' ward, including NHS staff and patients with direct first-hand experience of the excellent care it provides. Parents like Karen Meikle have told her story to the Paisley Daily Express today about what it means for her eight-year-old son, who has a life-limiting condition. The way the SNP politicians nationally and locally have behaved has left local families feeling totally betrayed and without any trust left in this government. Throughout this process, the Cabinet Secretary assured families that she would listen. Well, they couldn't have been clearer. Why have they been ignored? The Cabinet Secretary has snubbed parents with this announcement. Will the Cabinet Secretary agree to come to Paisley and explain her decision directly to the parents affected, or will she snub them again? Cabinet Secretary. Um, well, can I 
say to Neil Bibby, I didn't snub the parents. I met with the parents and listened to their concerns. And I also, though, listened to the local doctors who have been involved in treating those same children. And therefore, I had to make a decision. And the decision I made was based on the very clear local clinical advice from those doctors who know the children very well indeed that this was in the best interest of those children, that they would get better outcomes, not worse outcomes, better outcomes from being treated at the new children's hospital. No politician would ignore that clinical advice. What's important now is that the board get on and develop those plans so that the families have the assurance around the access arrangements they will have at the state-of-the-art new hospital less than seven miles away. Alison Johnson to be followed by Alex Cole Hamilton. Alison Johnson. Um, thank you. I visited the hospital last year, Family Support and Information Services, and I learned about the incredible work they do supporting parents, patients and their wider families. And I met with parents too of children. They'd taken their child to hospital, their child was you know, admitted immediately, and they found themselves practically living in the hospital for weeks. Now, I was surprised that much of this important work was largely funded and reliant on charitable donations. So given that there'll be increased demand on those services in the hospital, you know, this major service change will generate increased demand there. Will the Cabinet Secretary take steps to ensure that this service is fully funded and sustainable? Those families who are travelling further, who are away from home for longer, who are leaving caring responsibilities behind, will be properly supported. Thank you. Cabinet Secretary. Um, can I uh, first of all thank Alison Joseph for a question and uh, yes reassure her, I mean part of the commitment that the board have given around the reinvestment uh, of the £840,000 is to make sure that there is a, a build up of local services not just um, at the Royal Hospital for Children but also at the RAH and part of that is about making sure that there are plans in place uh, for those families, uh, for whether that's travel or subsistence or any other, and, and importantly, that they know about that. Um, I also just wanted to reiterate um, a, a point about making sure that where emergency uh, care uh, is required, that uh, the clinicians are very, very clear that the change in the emergency pathway that directs uh, the G GPs and the Scottish Ambulance Service uh, to the Royal Hospital for Children is a better and, and a safer model because then there's clarity about where children are going in an emergency situation. But I would reiterate again, for a lot of the care, particularly around outpatient uh, uh, facilities and local community paediatric services, they will remain delivered locally and for children accessing the A&E services at the Royal Alexandra Hospital, 86% of children in the Paisley area will continue to be seen <coughs> at the front door of the Royal Alexandra Hospital, 86%. So the vast majority of children within that area going through A&E will continue in the same way as they do at the moment. Alex Cole Hamilton to be followed by Fulton McGregor. Thank you, Presiding Officer. In her statement, the Cabinet Secretary says of her decision to close the children's ward at the Royal Alexandra, and I quote, it has been one of the most difficult that I have been required to make in my time as Health Secretary. That reflection should give us the measure of how significant this closure is, not just for the Cabinet Secretary, but the families who rely on it, and those members in this chamber who have fought to save it. Will the government now commit to honour those motions already passed in this chamber, to bring such decisions to Parliament before they are taken, to allow members to debate and scrutinise those proposals, so that in particular we might give better voice to the people such closures will affect? Cabinet Secretary. Um, well, can I say to Alex Cole Hamilton, these are difficult decisions. Um, I met with the parents and the families and I understand the strength of feeling here. But as the Cabinet Secretary required to make these difficult decisions, I have to take a step back from that. And as a politician, I rely on the expertise of those who, first of all, know the children very, very well and who can give me the best advice about what is the best, effective and safest care. And in this case, or any other case, uh, the clinical advice is critical. 
And that has to be the decision-making process, because otherwise what we'd have are service change proposals where there are issues about patient safety potentially brought here for debate on the floor of Parliament. So are decisions going to be made about patient safety on the basis of a vote in this place? I don't think that is a credible or a safe way to make changes to our health service. The decision rests with me and I have made this decision on the basis of what the clinicians have told me is in the best interests is the best outcome for those children and young people. No other considerations. And I would hope that every politician in this place would understand that you can't ignore that. Unless there's a paediatric specialist in this place, I don't mm, think there is. Yeah. I'm not, so I rely on the expertise of those who advise me. That's the basis of this decision. That's why it's the right decision. Fulton yeah, yeah. McGregor to be followed by Jimmy Green. Thank you, President Officer, and I will remind the Chamber and the PLO to the Health Secretary. The Cabinet Secretary has mentioned uh, several times uh, today already the, the clinical advice that she received. Can she uh, further assure the Parliament or explain to the Parliament what weight she gave that advice uh, from clinicians as opposed to other evidence that she heard? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I uh, had and a meeting with the local clinicians at the hospital and what I heard very directly from them was compelling. Mm -hmm. It was about the fact that they would uh, be able to provide better outcomes for, for those children and young people because of the range of backup services that are at the state of the art New Children's Hospital less than seven miles away. That is a very, very clear a very, very clear set of evidence and guidance to me. And as a politician, I rely on that. Subsequent to that, the letter that the clinicians uh, sent to me that I received this morning reiterated that and, of course, reiterated the importance they saw of working with the families around the plans, uh, particularly those families who have been on what we've called the open access arrangements. So the clinical advice has been compelling. And as a politician, I couldn't ignore that advice. And that is the basis of my decision. Nothing else, that is the basis of my decision. And that's why I had to make the decision I've made. Jamie Green to be followed by George Adam. Jamie Green. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The Cabinet Secretary in her statement that both uh, A&E departments at the IRH and in Verclyde would continue to receive paediatric patients who self-present without explicitly stating that they would continue to receive and accept all forms of emergency cases, including, including those presented by ambulance. Can the Cabinet Secretary confirm that there are no plans to divert any emergency care uh, from Inverclyde to the RHC, or can she outline any scenarios under which a decision might be taken to instead take a patient to the RHC instead of their nearest A&E? Secretary. Well, that already happens. The Scottish Ambulance Service already take those children that will require the services of the Royal uh, Children's Hospital, the new Children's Hospital, they take them directly there at the moment. So those decisions will be made on the, the basis of the clinical decision making, depending on what the illness is uh, of the children. And of course, there is always, uh, when children are concerned, uh, the, the, the risk is, um, is, is managed very, very carefully indeed. So they will always err on the side of caution. So that has always been the case for all of our uh, local hospitals. And where you have the state of the art hospital, uh, as we have, uh, in, uh, in Glasgow, uh, of course, with all those backup services, if they're not absolutely sure what is wrong with a child, they will always err on the side of caution and go straight to the children's hospital. And I would have thought that, that people would understand that that is the, the right thing to do. However, what I would reiterate in terms of self uh, referrers, uh, people, parents who turn up with their child, go through the door of the RAH, um, or indeed any other uh, local hospital, that that will continue as is at the moment and that 86% of, of those will be uh, seen and treated uh, within the, the Royal Alexandra Hospital. And uh, I, I hope that uh, can reassure the, the member. George Adam to be followed by Jackie Bailey. George Adam. Thank you, President Officer. As one of the main concerns raised by my constituents, can the Cabinet Secretary assure and reiterate that the plans are put in place for the open door families, including on transport links, before any service changes are made to Ward 15 at the RAH? Cabinet Secretary. <clears throat> uh, can I 
say to George Adam that uh, the issue he raises is actually very important. Is actually very important because the families that he refers to on open access or open door arrangements are those families who have children with complex health needs. Um, and therefore, what's important is that the plans that are put in place to make sure there's continuity of care and treatment will be put in place. The board have given me uh, that assurance uh, and the clinicians themselves who are involved in working with these children every day in the here and now have given me that assurance. I expect those arrangements to be in place before this change goes ahead and uh, I would uh, confirm that to, to George Adam. Jackie Bailey leads to be followed by Claire Hawkey. There's no getting away from the fact that the First Minister was asked in a TV debate whether the children's ward at the RAH would close, and she was clear she would not close that ward. And the Cabinet Secretary knows there were proposals to close the ward before May 2016. The First Minister has, of course, given similar commitments to my local community about the Vale of Leven Hospital and the vision for the Vale. So can the Cabinet Secretary tell me did she consult the First Minister about her decision? Was the First Minister copied into the minute of the decision? Was the minute ever circulated? Because this is fundamentally a matter of trust. And the key question for me is whether we can now trust anything that the First Minister tells us. Cabinet Secretary. Well, as I've said now on three occasions, uh, there was no proposal to close a particular ward that had come to us. The proposals only came to the Scottish Government on the 14th of March 2017. And that was the only point at which we saw the clinical evidence in favour of the decision. Given this decision is based on clinical evidence alone, that is the first time I saw that clinical evidence. The decision is Yes, Jackie, really, that was the first time I saw the clinical evidence was after the 14th of March. And speaking to the local clinicians has been a fundamental part of my decision making. The decision is my decision as laid out and required to be uh, my decision. Of course, the First Minister has been made aware of my decision and she accepts it fully. Claire Hawkey to be followed by Neil Findlay. Thank you, President Officer. I refer members to my register of interest. I'm a mental health nurse with a honorary contract with Greater Glasgow and Clyde NHS. Given the welcome decision to reject the closure of Lightburn Hospital, I would like to ask the Cabinet Secretary how she would expect the board and planning partners to take forward the provision of health and social care in partnership with the local community. Cabinet Secretary. Um, can I say to Claire Hawkey that um, a lot of work has to be done uh, around uh, Lightburn, around the hub. Uh, it was at uh, um, a very uh, early stage and not in a, a viable form to, to approve. However, within it is the concept of something quite uh, good, I think, and quite exciting. The idea that you would have a range of local services not currently available in the East End of Glasgow under one roof, under the, the, the model of a hub, but far more work on the detail is required. What I've said to the, the chair is I expect them to take that forward now in a way with the, the, the partners that they work with, uh, particularly the local authority, but also the uh, local community uh, and organisations like the local Parkinson's uh, group. I would expect all of those organisations organisations and the local community uh, to be fully involved in the development of a viable proposal uh, for the future uh, hub within the East End of Glasgow. Neil Findlay to be followed by John Mason. Uh, in 2016 Nicola Sturgeon said live on TV during an election debate that there was no plans to close the children's wars at, at the RAH in Paisley. For six years there have been staffing problems on top of staffing problems at St John's Children's Ward in Livingston with assurances it would not be closed. How can parents, children, grandparents and local people who join me on Friday at a protest at St John's believe a word the Cabinet Secretary or the First Minister says about the future of children's services in Livingston, given their blatant betrayal of the people of Paisley? Cabinet Secretary. Well, the only person talking about the closure of the paediatric ward at St John's is Neil Finlay. It's Neil Finlay, which uh, is, is rather... Is, is rather surprising. Um, can, I say, uh, can, I, can I say this about St John's? As he knows, a report from the Royal College of Paediatrics and Child Health was received by NHS Lothian in October last year. It concluded that the preferred option for both it and NHS Lothian continued to be a 24-hour consultant and Tier 2 cover model for St John's. 
The college recognised that the development of this model is a long-term solution that required a successful recruitment campaign, of which NHS Lothian has been working very, very hard to do and has had quite a lot of success, as he knows well. Um, so I would have hoped that he would get behind NHS Lothian, where the clinical, uh, the clinical advice to me is that that is a service that should continue. There's no proposal that has come to me with clinical advice that the, the, the ward in St John's should close. So I would have thought that Neil Finlay would be better placed in focusing on supporting his local hospital in their recruitment campaign rather than, than scaremongering, yeah. which actually could yes. put people off. Yeah. Well, it's a serious yeah. point. Yeah. It's a serious yeah. point because if, if yeah. potential doctors, if potential doctors are looking at whether or not to apply for a post that covers St John's, are they likely to be encouraged or not by what Neil Finlay is saying? And I would suggest that he should be very careful in actually encouraging people to apply for those posts rather than the opposite. And, and I am sure that's what the local clinicians at St John's would be encouraging him to do. John Mason. Thank you. I wonder if the uh, Cabinet Secretary would agree that the key uh, people for the health provision in the East End of Glasgow are the people of the East End of Glasgow. And would she also agree that, uh, given the better transport links, Parkhead Hospital site is the best place for a new hub and other health facilities? Cabinet Secretary. Well, what I have uh, said to the, the chair and the board is that in taking this proposal uh, forward uh, and developing it into a viable uh, proposition, that they should uh, continue to explore both the Parkhead and the Lightburn sites. Uh, what is important here is that there is the development of something that can meet the needs, not just the, of the existing local services in the East End of Glasgow, but actually to look at what uh, further services can be developed in one of the mm. poorest communities within Glasgow. I think this is a, a really exciting opportunity to do so, but it has to engage the local community properly. And that is a, the challenge I've put back to the Chair and the Board. Can I thank the Cabinet Secretary and members for their contributions. That concludes our statement on major service change proposals. We'll now move on to the next item.